Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. The adult and inner child in you will love the tasty, never boring flavors of Magic Spoon cereals and you won't believe they're actually good for you. Magic Spoon cereals contain 0 grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only 4 to 5 net grams of carbs in each serving. Magic Spoon cereal bars are perfect for on the go and have 1 gram of sugar, 10 grams of protein, 4 net grams of carbs, and only 130 calories per bar. They are also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. You can build your very own variety box and use our code Red Poppy Ranch for $5 off. You can choose from the best selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors. Plus other awesome flavors including honey nut, blueberry muffin, and cinnamon roll. You can also add the cookies and cream and cocoa peanut butter flavor cereal bars to your variety box. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code Red Poppy Ranch for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash Ranch to save $5 off your order today. For our Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. For the last five years, we have heated our house with nothing but our wood stove and wood from off of our land for the most part. And about a month ago, this is what the chimney cap looked like. So after seeing what that spark arrestor looked like, naturally I wanted to know what the chimney looked like. Okay, so today's the day we find out if the inside of the chimney looks the same way that that spark arrestor did. So using the same piece of conduit that the chimney brush is attached to, I'm actually gonna run my GoPro down the chimney with a special light and see what it looks like. This is what is called a poly cleaning brush. And I bought this down at my local hardware store. I had them bring it in for me and I did not order the fiberglass handles with it because those things have a tendency to be a little bit expensive. But I'm gonna show you how I saved a little bit of money and had some parts that I could reuse when I was done. First things first, quarter inch by half inch uh, bell reducer, galvanized bell reducer to go from the quarter inch thread on the chimney pipe. Okay, don't unscrew this thing in your chimney. It happens. Now I've got a half inch piece of PVC. And again, as long as I don't unscrew it, it's fine. But I'm gonna glue the conduit now and let this set up for a little bit before I take it up there and clean the chimney pipe. I'm gonna let that sit up for a little bit and dry so it doesn't come apart on me while I'm cleaning the chimney. But that is now a 20 foot long chimney brush and I can reuse the conduit when I'm done. By the way, this is a poly brush. You never use a metal brush on a metal chimney pipe. Over the last five years, I've used a few different stoves, but this Lopi stove or Lopi, however you say it, this stove is my favorite stove by far and it's about a 30 year old stove. This stove more than heats us out of our home uh, and every once in a while, I get tempted to replace it with a newer version of this stove, but the newer stoves do not flow as well as these old stoves as far as the chimney's concerned. So the big question is, how much soot do we have on the inside of that chimney pipe? The stove is completely cleaned out, and then I removed the upper fire bricks. Most wood stoves, especially newer stoves, oftentimes have obstructions in front of the chimney, so you can't push the brush all the way through. This stove has a couple of fire bricks and a piece of angle iron, which I removed. So there's no longer any obstructions. I'm putting a box in here to catch any and all soot that may come out. I'm closing the doors. And then I'm gonna cover the wood stove with an old towel just to be super careful with all this soot. The damper is in the open position. So I'm now gonna get up on the roof and run the camera down first and just see what I can see. 
There's a couple of 45s in the uh, single wall, but there is no bins in the triple wall that goes all the way through our roof. So I should get a really good picture of what this is gonna look like. So there was surprisingly little creosote in the chimney, but I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. But I have burned just about every type of wood that you can think of from uh, box elder to maple, the maple that we have here on our property, as well as every little piece of, of scrap lumber that is left over from a project that we have around here from spruce to dug fir to pine. Uh, but the majority of the wood that we burn is maple and it's a hardwood, obviously, and it's hot, burns very hot. But I still thought that there would be more creosote in the chimney than, than there actually was. So I'm definitely going to sleep better knowing that, that uh, the chimney is good and clean. I looked into finding a newer version of that same stove. That stove is good for about 2,000 square feet, which is basically how big our house is. Um, I looked into finding a new stove, but because of all of the restrictions that have changed with all of the new stoves, uh, it now requires a bigger stove to accomplish uh, the same square footage that I need. And the new stoves just don't, they don't seem to burn as hot as the older stove. So if anything, I may take that old stove and get it powder coated with a high temp uh, powder coat and just continue to use it. But one of the other major criteria that we had to have with a, with a wood burning stove um, was a stove that burns hot enough that we could cook on it if we had to. Napoleon, some Napoleon stoves, some soapstone sto stoves, 
um, are insulated so well that they get hot, almost even too hot to the touch, but they're not hot enough to cook anything on. So that was most definitely a factor with that stove as well. So we have warmed things up before on that stove. Uh, we've never really cooked on it. But anyway, if you live in cold country, you should own a wood stove. But if you're anywhere near a city anymore, it's almost impossible to, to have a wood stove. But I must say, um, heating our home and keeping my family warm on the coldest days of the year with a wood stove is one of my favorite things to do. From cutting the trees down to stack in the firewood. It's one of my favorite things to do, so. Okay, it is time to get the chimney fixed. Um, I picked up the parts that I think I'm gonna need, uh, but the truth is I don't know until I get up there and look real close at it, figure out what's been damaged and what has not been damaged. And then I also need to get the snow splitter installed so this never happens again. So I just figured out that I think I can pull the chimney straight up out of the uh, flashing without having to go down and climb up into the rafters in the shop. So I'm going to try it now. This is a friendly reminder that all this damage happened to the shop chimney because I didn't install a snow splitter. Getting this chimney fixed will allow me to work in the shop all winter long without any issues. I barely used the shop last winter once the chimney was damaged because I couldn't keep it warm in there, but naturally this year is going to be different. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is run and get a tube of the polyurethane sealant that I use on the, on the uh, flashings because it got damaged uh, when it was laying over. Seal that, seal around here, and then we're good to go. But I still need to install the snow splitter, but it's not here yet. So as soon as it gets here, I'll get it installed and hopefully we never have this problem again. Okay, this is a snow guard or a snow splitter for our chimney. And this one's CNC'd, it's galvanized, it's basically, you pull it out of the package, 
you bend your tabs to fit your angles and you screw it down and you're good to go but it's also a hundred and i think 75 180 bucks now i have a piece of flat steel up on the hill and i have a little small uh, sheet metal brake so i'm going to try and bend my own up real quick and then get it installed on the shop and then i don't have to worry anymore about snow slipping off the roof and damaging that chimney All right, it's all done. It turned out pretty good in spite of the fact that uh, if I had done that a couple of years ago, we wouldn't be here now talking about this, but it's all sealed up. It's not gonna leak. Uh, that's a little bit low for me. I'd like it up a little bit higher than that, but it's the piece of pipe that I had, so I'm gonna use it. But that's all that's needed to split the snow and keep that snow from folding over the chimney like it did before. And look, you can see the spark arrestor on this chimney is starting to build up as well. Okay, so I used my marking pencil and a long stick and I put it 
against the edge of the chimney pipe and I tried to trace around the outside edge. You can kind of see the circle there. I've got all the windows open and when I first lit the fire it was 28 degrees inside, 26 out. I literally have all the windows open because it's burning some of the paint off and it's still almost 35 degrees in here. I need to close everything up once this clears out and really see how warm I can get it in here. Now this stove either sat outside or appears to have gone through a flood of some kind because the lower portion of it was just covered in a silty, almost a river bottom type soot. But it's sound. Everything's here. I didn't want to put just any old stove in our place here. I wanted something unique to us, unique to the application, something that fit in.